Wedge its dental dam stabilizing cord is simply stretched between the contacts at the distal end of the isolation. Wedgets cord may be used in either the anterior or posterior region as long as there is a distal contact present. Mark the anchor tooth hole using the template if necessary. Place the dam on the frame and then punch the hole. Place water soluble lubricant on the tissue side of the dam to facilitate placement of the dam over the anchor tooth. Carry the dam and frame to the mouth as one unit and slip the dam over the anchor tooth. Wrap the wedgets cord around the tooth. For increased access to the working field, the mini-isolation is an alternative method. Mark holes to include three teeth in the isolation with the treatment tooth in the center. Place the dam on the frame, punch holes, apply lubricant, and carry the dam and frame to the mouth as one unit. Place a wedgets cord on each end of the isolation and use floss to place the dam in approximately. Invert the dental dam by tucking under the gingival edges of the dam. When isolating for posterior isolations, include a sufficient number of teeth to provide adequate access. Usually, one tooth distal of the treatment tooth or teeth and extending the dam to the midline is sufficient. Mark the hole positions, place the dam on the frame, punch the holes and carry the frame and dam simultaneously to the mouth as one unit. Anchor the dam on each end of the isolation with a wedge its cord. Use wax dental floss to place the dam in approximately using the loop technique as has been demonstrated. Dry the gingival area with air and invert the dam using a composite instrument. Dental dam removal is most efficient if this sequence is utilized. First, remove both wedges cords. Secondly, place a finger in the buccal vestibule to protect the patient's soft tissues and cut the interceptal dam with blunt-ended scissors. After all the interceptal dam is cut, remove the dam and the frame as one unit. Remove the dam from the frame and check it for missing pieces. 